everybody. Come on in, have a seat, if you will. Thank you for being here this morning. We appreciate your just coming in and worshiping with us or being a guest or member, regular tender, uh, whatever uh, status you are today. We want to get our announcements out of the way first. If you are a guest with us this morning, if you don't mind taking a minute just to fill out a guest registration connect card, that would be good. That way we know that you've been here today. We can send you a thank you note uh, and just let you know in a very simple way that we appreciate your joining us in worship this morning. A couple things we want to get out of the way. First of all, thank you. Those who came out yesterday to work so hard on the church. Um, you know, if you can't see it from back there, there's some new carpet up here. It's not installed yet, but there's some new carpet up here. That's what it's going to look like when it is down. So if you want to take a peek at it before you leave today, that'd be good. Um, and we appreciate those who worked on the stage. The courtyard looks beautiful, don't you think? And our ladies worked so hard on that out there, making it look beautiful. Cutting trees, cutting grass, all that jazz that we have to do around here. Um, so we appreciate those coming out and helping out with that. Uh, I do want to announce a couple things about Vacation Bible Schools coming up June the 20th through the 24th. So we want to ask you to pray about that, okay? This is a great opportunity to reach out to children and families every single year. And so we're asking that you'll prepare, help us prepare for that um, as you pray for that. And today there are some door hangers out there that people can pass out. If you'd like to take um, some of these door hangers that are at the Welcome Center, you can take a few of these with you, hang them on some doors in your neighborhood or somewhere close to the church, and that would be much appreciated. You can do that right after church if you'd like to, or sometime this week or uh, the next couple of weeks, if you will. Also, um, I'll be on vacation next week, and so I won't be here. Uh, Derek will be speaking in my place, and then we will not have... Bible study Wednesday night, and the reason is because uh, we're doing a pretty in-depth Bible study, and it's just really hard to pass that off to somebody else, so we're going to take a break next Wednesday night. If you're watching online or uh, you come in-house, we'll just take a break next Wednesday night and then pick up with that the next Wednesday following. Uh, when I do come back, I want to kind of prepare you for this a little bit. We're going to do a short series on the gospel um, some, you know, some things that God's really put on my heart about the gospel. Uh, sometimes we need to be reminded of the gospel and the, the message and also the methods that go along with the gospel. So when I come back, we're going to do a short series on the gospel message. And then I want to share this with you as well. And then after this, Derek's going to come and he's going to do something for our graduates. But um, this past week, I got a message on Facebook from a lady in Africa. In fact, it's the second message. Um, if we can have that slide real quick. Um, the shoebox, the Christmas shoebox ministry that we do here every year um, really goes out to a lot of places, some of which we don't even know about. So, um, um, so if you guys can maybe get that slide, I just want people to see the picture that she sent us. There's a picture of a lady who's doing evangelism and she wanted to share a picture uh, with us. She's doing evangelism on the Ivory Coast. And remember, we don't really know where all these boxes go, right? Right, we don't. Okay, so uh, they, are evan they are in this picture evangelizing 150 kids over there, okay? So when you contribute to the shoebox ministry and those things go out and we deliver them and you pack them and they get wrapped up and they go out, those things, we don't know where they're going, okay? But they're going out to, to share, to spread and share the gospel and do the Lord's kingdom work in many places that we're not aware of, okay? So that's just a picture reminding us of that this morning, okay? So wherever Derek's at, he can come. Is he? There he is, okay. Hide over there in the corner. All right, so Derek, if you'll do that and then pray afterwards, we appreciate it, okay? So today is a big milestone for one of our group members, so if Riley Yoten can make his way up here, this is super embarrassing to like a lot of the kids, and I remember doing this also, being called up to the front of the church at graduation, and being recognized, given a Bible, so this is, how many of y'all remember your high school graduation? Mine was 12 years ago, but it doesn't seem like 12 years ago, <laughs> but imagine being, <laughs> I was 12, I'm not, I didn't say that was that old ago. Imagine like 
you know, this past two years, Riley's overcome a whole lot. So have, our, so have like every other student that is graduating this year and last year has overcome a whole lot. You overcame a worldwide pandemic doing Zoom classes, going back in person, wearing masks. That was a hard and tough time. I know it had to have been. So today we want to honor you with this. And I'm going to give you a word of advice. High school started at 8 a.m. When you sign up for college classes and you see an 8 a.m. class, don't take that class. <laughs> that is a different, that's a different mindset. And that's like the devil whispering in your ear of, take the 8 a.m. You can do that. You did it in high school. You're going to drink a pot of coffee in that 8 a.m. class and then go to sleep. So there is my word of advice for you. And I want to give you this thick, big theological study Bible that lets you know, and it's heavy because God's word is heavy, but it's very just wealthy to you as a person. So today, I'm going to pray for you and our church. I want them to pray for you as well. So if we could, let's go ahead and stand up. And if you want, you can outstretch your arms. We're going to just pray for Riley, pray for the graduating seniors as well. Right. Let's go before the throne. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today just rejoicing with Riley and with his family, God, and just the great things that he's accomplished and that he will accomplish in the future, God. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you that you just guide his path, that you let him know that you're always with him, Lord, that your love is there with him and you're guiding him on this way and throughout life, through the college and the college classes, Lord, and even if he does have to take an 8 a.m. class, God, let him be awake for those and just let him be energized for them too, Lord. And it's your name, Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. All right, Riley. Good luck. With the All right. Remain standing. Can we get anything? I know we have problems this morning. Can you let me know when you're ready? There we go. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. You're a good, good father to you all. 
Filled with wonder, 
has to be at the top of the list. Days we look forward to. <laughs> Got a little ways before we get there. Then there's 4th of July. Most of you probably love sitting in your backyard with a hot dog in one hand, a sparkler in the other. Then there's your birthday, uh, if you can remember it. The last day of school. The last day of school. The first day of vacation, right? And then last Sunday we talked about, we, or we ended the message with another important day that is still in the works as we speak. I hope you were here last week or you saw it online. It's called the Day of the Lord. And every day is another day 
closer to the day, okay? So every day that we live is one more day closer to the day, the day of the Lord. Uh, we're going to go back real quick to Hebrews chap chapter 10, verses, verse 25. At the end of that verse, that's where we left off last week. I told you when we ended the message that we would finish this, this Sunday. And so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole verse, just the last part of it where Paul says, and I do believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. Where Paul said, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, if you remember, we talked about things that were going to happen, things that... Um, that we needed to be aware of and that they would intensify as the day approached, as each day, day goes by. Now this was written several thousand years ago, but from that point, the days have been rolled off, counted off, and we are continuously approaching that day, okay? I'm not sure what your understanding is of those things, um, but the Bible talks about more than one place, the day of the Lord, so we have to look at that first to see what he's talking about, okay? And I'm not going to unpack that in a way that's, you know, just like this conclusive um, understanding of the day of the Lord. We're going to have to go kind of on the surface and a little bit simple version. But when the Bible mentions the day of the Lord, it has both a narrow sense of the meaning, which means Christ's reign on earth. Christ's reign on earth, okay? In short, there will come a day when Jesus returns and will reign on earth for a thousand years, okay? Um, it also has a broader sense, including the entire tribulation period of seven years, okay? Okay? And I believe that we can sum it up in saying that the day of the Lord simply means the second advent, which advent is the Latin word for coming, okay? The second coming. The first coming, the second coming. And the second coming is yet to happen. When we go to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, 24, rather, um, Jesus unpacks many different events in that chapter that are earmarks and indicators of what this time will look like before the day of the Lord. So I hope you're at least somewhat aware of what's going on around you right now and how that parallels with the things that the Bible talks about. So he unpacks in Matthew chapter 24, it gives us a roadmap on these things that will happen as we approach the day of the Lord. And we are approaching that day. We're approaching that day. And let me say that as we watch the world spin out of control, what would God have us do? I don't know if you've asked yourself that question or those questions recently, but what would God have you do as that day approaches? How would God have you live? What would he have you focus on? I've asked myself that. More than once, God, what would you have me do as I understand biblical principles and what, what my understanding of eschatology, which is the study of end times, which I'm no expert on. But as we look at that and we see how it parallels with many things that are happening right now as we speak today, my biggest question for me is not what's going to happen, not what it looks like and when, but God, how would you have me live during this time? What would you want me to do? What are the things that I should focus on as that day approaches? Because Paul says that all the more as the day approaches, all the more of what we looked at last week, okay, which I can't go back and redo today. But all those things that we talked about last week, Paul says do them more and more and more as the day approaches. So as that day approaches, we can't, you know, in a very obscure or we're ob oblivious as to what's going on around us, we, 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 we simply can't live like that. God wants us to be aware of our surroundings. 
So we're going to finish what we started last week or conclude that. So let me begin with a question this morning. What can we do more of? How do we play this out, ladies and gentlemen? How do we flesh this out as we understand that the day of the Lord is approaching? How do we, how do we deal with that? What do we do with it? Jesus spent three and a half years training and teaching his disciples in three main areas, okay? One of which was this, is to continue what he started. In other words, whenever he ascended back to heaven... He left in the hands of those 12 disciples. Okay, now it's your turn. I'm passing the baton. Now you guys have to pick up where we left off, and you have to carry the torch through your, through your lifetime, and then those have to carry their, the torch through their lifetime. In other words, we're still carrying the torch today. The second thing is this, is that they had to learn how to live in a world that was hostile toward Christianity, toward Christians. Sounds kind of familiar today. And then the third thing is to teach people to be watchful. I'm going to focus mostly on that this morning. Teaching people how to be watchful. Now, that right there is a message that's current and relative today as if it was, you know, as, as the same way it was when Jesus spoke that. Very, very practical message that still works today. To be watchful. So God has prepared us to be mindful and watchful of the days that we're living in. And, and let me say this, folks. I, I hope on some level, to some degree, young, old, middle-aged, wherever you're at in life, whoever you are, I pray that you are being watchful of what's going on around you. It's imperative that you do that. And God reminds us that we must be watchful and mindful of these days that we're living in because we don't know the time but we do know what the time might look like. And I think for those who try to figure out what time it's going to be, it's better to know what time it is and to understand what's going on around you, all right? It's not a message that you can focus on every Sunday. Some people call it the doom and gloom message. Well, there's nothing doom and gloom about it. It's truth. And it's what's been predicted for thousands of years, and we are approaching it very rapidly. All right? So God just simply wants us to be aware of what's approaching. I mean, I think it's great that God gives us some earmarks and landmarks and, you know, some of these things to look at so that we know the time's coming. We don't know when it's coming, exactly what's going to happen when it gets here, but we do have indicators. And I will say this. Even social media platforms, both secular and Christian, are talking about these things. I think it's interesting that when you get on social media, you even find secular social media outlets talking about these things that are going on in the world and what's happening. So I'm talking about end times, rapture, and all those things. Look them up for yourself. It's not just Christian formats that are talking about that. I think it's interesting. So let's go to Matthew chapter 4, 24 just for a moment, okay? We're going to share one verse. I wish, you know, maybe sometime we'll go back and go through all of this or some of it. But let's focus on this today. Matthew 24, verse 44, Jesus said, You must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. And I will say that whenever the Lord decides, when God in heaven decides to send His Son back to earth... There will be people who are simply not expecting it. They just won't expect it. But look at what he says right after that in the same verse. He says, you must be ready all the time. Now, I think it's interesting and very necessary to focus on that, that you must be ready all the time so that you're not taken off guard, so that you know when the day's approaching, approaching so that you can prepare as much as you need to and as much as you can to be prepared. The question is this today is, am I ready? You know, the Lord Jesus said you must be ready. I think the question this morning is this, am I ready? Am I ready for this? Some people, I've, I've said in funerals, people will tell me, you know, when they're getting ready to pass away, they'll say, you know, I'm not ready to die. 
Even Christians have said, I'm not ready to die. And I've thought about that several times. I've thought, well, you may not be ready, but at least you're prepared. Right? I don't think anybody's ready to die. Anybody here ready to die today? Okay, I don't think, I don't think anybody is, but you can be prepared. You know, we may not be ready for the Lord on his day. We, we, we may not be ready, but he does teach us to be prepared. And he's saying here you must be ready, prepared all the time. You know, you, you and I, we don't have to wait for something. We don't have to wait for something to happen in order to be ready for it. Some people say, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Maybe you're one of those people. Well, the problem with that is this. When you get to it, the bridge may not be there. And so it's very necessary, I think, sometimes to make sure you're ready before you get to the bridge. You know, have you noticed every time that it rains, people, they descend on the grocery store like a bunch of locusts? <laughs> and they clean the shelves out. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Dad comes home with 14 gallons of milk and seven loaves of bread. Like they're going to run out of bread and milk in 24 hours. <laughs> but he wants to make sure that they're prepared. It's funny how people, they go to the store and they buy everything that they'd never buy before. And they want to make sure they're prepared for the rainstorm that's coming. Yeah, yeah could be. <laughs> but no matter what the culture or the politics, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the climate or the economy is, both good and bad, the Bible teaches us that we should be wise and always prepared. So what my message to you this morning initially is this, be prepared. Make sure that you are preparing yourself as we speak for the day of the Lord, whether it comes in your lifetime or not. Jesus is telling us here to be watchful, to be ready, to be prepared. Now there's three ways I want to share with you today how you can do that. And you can take notes, jot them down, or do whatever you want to with them. But I'm going to share them with you and how to be prepared. I think we have to begin with the heart. We have to begin with the heart. You know, throughout the scriptures, we are always encouraged to live close to God. And so as simple as I, and elementary as I can make it this morning, I just want to say to you that I would encourage you to live close to God. In your heart, in your mind. You know, every there's every enemy out there against the, the good and the godly, and, there, and it's working overtime with what I think are three objectives. Number one is this, is to rob you of the great things that God wants to do in your life, the things that he has planned in your life. The enemy wants to rob you of those things. This comes from John chapter 10, verse 10. A second thing is this, is that he wants to eliminate spiritual activity in your life. Steal, kill, and destroy. To eliminate spiritual activity. The result of that is this, it moves us to a place of being nominal and complacent. Now let me say that, folks, without being, or without even sounding, you know, critical or preachy or churchy or whatever you might want to say. But the enemy wants to take any of us to a place of, of eliminating spiritual activity in our lives so that, as a result, we will become more nominal, more complacent in our, in our walk with the Lord. Okay, And that can happen sometimes on a level to where we don't even notice it until we get so far, we just uh, we, 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 um, drift out so far sometimes that we don't even know how we got there. And then the third thing is this, is to destroy. Destroy what? Destroy what God has done in your life. Destroy what God is doing in your life. And destroy what God wants to do in your life. Simply putting things, other things in its place. Now, now think about that with me for a second. To destroy. Putting other things. Now listen to me. Just, just bear with me a minute. Putting other things in, your, in, in, in the place of God in your life. Well, let, me let me share this real quick. Okay, Just ponder this for a minute. Whenever we allow that to happen, 
Here's what takes place. We lose focus. When, when we allow other things to replace the spirituality in our lives and the place of God, we lose focus. And whenever we lose focus, the danger of that is we lose interest. And whenever we lose interest, the bottom line is, is that we can get lost. That's what happens, okay? Now, that's what is happening. That's what is happening. Not pointing fingers at anyone, anybody, an entity, an organization. But in general, that's what is happening as we speak. So these are issues of the heart. And so we're encouraged to prepare our hearts, okay? Let Christ give you the encouragement, the inner healing, and maybe even the deliverance that you need or seek or even want to today. Let's look at a verse here. Next verse. Look what the psalmist says in Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Now look at this. Renew a loyal spirit within me. That's from the New Living Translation. That reads very well. Renew a loyal spirit in me. That's what the psalmist is saying. He even got to the place in his own life where he needed renewal. And so I would encourage you this morning... Wherever you may be walking with the Lord, if you've drifted, you've lost focus, maybe you've lost interest, maybe you're getting to the place where you're feeling like, if I don't do something here, I'm going to get lost, that you would just simply ask God to help renew the Spirit, His Spirit in your heart, to renew it, to recapture it, to go back and get that first love, because sometimes our hearts just drift away. And the psalmist is telling us sometimes we need to ask God, to give us a clean heart. God, give me a clean heart. There's things in my heart that need to be cleaned up this morning. You know, when it comes to cleaning the house, let me ask you a question this morning. Do you vacuum spots and call it a day? Just vacuum spots in your house and call it a day. Or are you one of the people that dust the baseboards, the light bulbs, <laughs> the light bulbs, and, you know, you clean in all the places that nobody's going to look, the, you know, the ceiling fans, all that. You know, sometimes we just take a swipe at it, don't we, and call it a day. In, in the world of automotive, in the automotive field, here's what they call that. They call cars like that a 10-footer. In other words, you know why they call them 10-footers? Because they look good 10 feet away. And sometimes, you know, it's kind of, I'm not, this is not a message of cleaning the house. But we, we clean the house and we hit the high spots that look pretty good. And we forget the baseboards, the light bulbs, and the ceiling fans. Because nobody really notices those. You see, our hearts are that way too sometimes. We take a swipe at them when there are moments that our hearts need a thorough cleaning. And that's what the psalmist is telling us. God, come and clean my heart. Renew my spirit. Help me prepare my heart, Lord, in spiritual renewal. Things can look pretty good on the outside. Sometimes we, it's like, well, I don't have any mustard stains on my shirt. But we hide all the dirt on the inside and the edges, don't we? <laughs> well, whatever baggage you might be carrying this morning from the past or whatever else it could be in your life, we're encouraged to unpack that, to get our hearts clean. We used to sing an old hymn called It Is Well With My Soul. H.G. Spafford wrote that song in a very tragic event in his life. You could probably sit. It's going through your mind right now, isn't it? It worked, didn't it? I mentioned that and it worked. And now you're singing it. It is well with my soul. Have you noticed the results of that? It is well with my soul. I have peace like a river. Have you noticed that? You see, when our hearts are clean, folks, we have peace. When our hearts are clean, we have confidence in what's going on in our life. Our heart's clean. And so the first step is to prepare our hearts because that's when we find peace. Peace doesn't come when the circumstances change. We often go to God with prayers and say, God, Change the circumstances, and sometimes he will, sometimes he needs to. But the peace that God offers us and the peace that comes from knowing Christ comes whether the circumstances change or not. They're in the circumstances. In other words, you can be going through the worst of circumstances, and you are experiencing the peace that only Christ can give as you trust him. Sometimes we just simply need to be set free. Now, let me mention a couple things here, folks. 
and, and you, you think about them, okay? But there are things that hold us captive and bond and in bondage sometimes. And we're not aware of them. And there are things that are in our hearts and our minds sometimes that we need to ask God to clean out. And let me just rifle through them real quick and you think about them, okay? You know, things like anger, resentment. Sometimes we hold those in our hearts. And it keeps, it, it keeps us from having a, a pure heart, a prepared heart, jealousy, cynicism, mistrust, lying, faking things, all those, all those things, you know, presenting guilt on other people. Those are the things that the scriptures talk about that hold us captive in bondage. And, 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 and sometimes we try to come clean with the Lord, but we hang on to these things. And it's like being incarcerated. As long as you're carrying baggage in your life, you're a prisoner of that baggage. And you always will be. You'll always be a prisoner of that baggage. And the Lord wants you to come and say, God, help me turn this loose, release this, and set me free from this so that I can have a clean heart, a prepared heart, Lord, and be ready for you or anything else that you have. Release it. Second thing we look at this morning is not just a clean heart, not just a pure heart, a prepared heart, but also trained eyes. Train your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at this from Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day on which your Lord will come. Pretty simple message, isn't it? Therefore, Keep watch because you do not know the day in which your Lord will come. You know what Matthew is doing here in the Gospel of Matthew? He is describing numerous events that will happen as the day approaches. Okay, we mentioned that earlier. Some of which, let me say this, some of which have already begun. Some of these have already begun. Go back and read it for yourself. Jesus gave us these indicators, not so that we could determine the time, but so that we would be prepared for the hour. Now, once again, let me challenge all of us with something. You know, we can ignore the indicators. It kind of goes back to that one thing, if I don't know, then I'm not responsible. And so people just simply... Um, you know, excuse themselves from certain information because if they don't know it, then they don't, they're not responsible for it. Well, whether we know it or not, we're still going to be responsible for it. Jesus gave us these indicators so that we would know what the hours or hour might look like as it approaches. And we can ignore the indicators or not. We can write them off. We can even be offended by them when we read them. Some people, they read things about the rapture, the end times, or the days in which we live, and they're, they're offended by them. And I think one reason why they might be sometimes is when they, they hear these, they like life here so much, they don't want to think about life somewhere else. I don't know. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth about what's happening. Sometimes I don't either. When we start talking about these conversations with other people, Becky and I might talk about them, talk about them in family circles, what's going on in the world today, as we might say. I always tell myself, you get three minutes. You get three minutes to talk about that because that's just about all I can do. You know, that's, it, it's, that's just about all you can do is about three minutes of it. <laughs> but sometimes we want to ignore it or write it off or be offended by it and just don't want to hear it. But listen, folks, they've been predicted by Jesus, Zechariah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jeremiah. These things have been predicted for thousands of years. And isn't it amazing that we could very well be the generation that gets to see these events unfold and happen right before our very eyes? You're not happy about that, are you? You don't want to amen that. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to. Let me, I'm going to give you four things I want, I want to challenge you and, and encourage you to watch for. Okay? He 
He said, watch. I would be doing you, I, I would be doing us an injustice as a minister of the gospel, as a preacher of the word, as a pastor of a church, as a spiritual leader for over 35 years, I would be doing an injustice not to speak of these things periodically. Because whether we are aware of them, whether we're prepared for them or not, whether we even like it or not, they are going to happen and they are happening as we speak. They are. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. And furthermore, I don't know why we want to. I don't know why we want to. I love my house. I love my yard. I like being able to look out my kitchen window and seeing eight miles all the way almost into Ross, Ohio, from Fairfield. I love that. I love my motorcycle. I love my grandkids. But I know there's a better life waiting for me than this. Amen. If there's not, we'll make the best of it. <laughs> Four things to be watching for, okay? And you can write hate mail to me when I get out of here. Number one is this, is globalism. As we speak today, 3% of the elites in the world are working for a one world order through the World Health Organization and also through the World Financial uh, or the World Economic Forum. You can like it or not, believe it or not, it's happening and there's nothing that we can do to stop it. Second thing is this, is Jerusalem. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem because all of the events that are going to happen in the next little while are going to take place centered around Jerusalem, the hub of the world. They're not going to center around the United States of America. They're not. It's going to be Israel in Jerusalem. And those of you who have studied this know that I'm telling the truth. The third thing is this, is lawlessness, where there is no rules and no consequences. And you better believe that's where we live today. And if you don't, go visit San Francisco. The fourth thing is this, is a loss of interest in God. Not spiritual things, not spirituality, a loss of interest in God. After 35 years of ministry, me along with thousands of other spiritual leaders where our hearts are broken over the way God's churches and sheep are scattered everywhere. Scattered everywhere. Okay, now we're going to leave that right there, okay? I don't want to say anything more than that. I believe the Holy Spirit can speak in ways that I don't need to. But the church is scattered everywhere today. Sometimes nowhere to be found. Train your eyes. Watch what's going on, folks. Let God prepare your heart as we speak today. Get close to God. Be aware of what's going on around you. And that's what we'll look at next. The last thing, sharpen your minds. First Peter, sharpen your minds. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober... Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Okay, now let's look at a couple things there, okay? You see, I don't know if you can relate to this or not today, but our minds are confused. We live in a state of confusion, and it's very intentional. Our minds are tired and exhausted. You ever feel like your mind is just exhausted? You ever try to keep up with all the information that you're bombarded with all the time? Just every day, the information, the stuff you get in the mail, email, just everything that's just inundated with all this information, and our minds are exhausted. We hear something one day that changes tomorrow. You know, yesterday we were going to be in a recession. Now we're not. Next day we'll be in a recession. The next day we won't be, okay? It changes every day, doesn't it? You know what I'm talking about. Okay? And so our minds are exhausted. We go back to 1 Peter. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, let your hope 
on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Okay, let's look at a couple things there. Two things that we are not taught to do in the scripture. None of my business what you do. I'm just trying to teach what I believe the scripture tells us, okay? One is this, never, never, ever, ever panic. Never panic. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ and covered by his blood and saved by his sacrifice and work on the cross, you have nothing to be fearful of. Hope you're not afraid. You have nothing to be fearful of. Do not panic, okay? Don't ever panic. Don't make decisions out of fear. Every time you make a decision out of fear, you'll almost always go back and look and see if that was either the wrong decision or not the best one. Second thing is this, is stockpile, okay? Now, I don't care whether you stockpile or not, but, but I want to share a couple things about that. As we prepare for whatever may be coming to stockpile, there's a lot of information out there about stockpiling. I talked to a guy the other day, and he said that his, he and his wife decided that they were going to go out and they were going to spend $250,000 on three things. One, they were going to spend $250,000 on gold. Now, this is all encompassed in this $250,000, and I am not making this up, okay? I think some of you think, boy, he spends a lot of time making these stories up. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't lie, and I will tell you the truth, okay? $250,000 divided into three sections in gold, ammunition, and beans. That's a lot of beans. <laughs> That's a lot of ammunition. How many, how many times can you pull a trigger, okay? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's none of my business what they do. Here's what I'm saying, though. It doesn't matter how much you have of something, sooner or later, you will run out. You will run out. I can't find it in the scripture where we are taught to stockpile and prepare for something that we don't know is going to happen that people are preparing for. I don't know that that's in the scriptures. You can do it if you want to. I don't care what you do, all right? I'm just saying that's not what we're taught to do. Fear and stockpiling are two things that do not reflect the nature of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Faith and courage, watchfulness, preparedness are things that we're taught. And that's what he's saying here. So we've covered a lot this morning in a very quick time. The main thing I wanted to portray to us this, and communicate this morning is this. Is folks, with all my heart, I believe that we are approaching the day of the Lord. I have zero doubt about that. Zero. Some of you don't either. Zero doubt. God was so gracious to give us indicators of what these times would look like. And we're seeing some of these things unfold as we speak today. You go back to this verse for a minute. A couple of these words here. Is, Peter uses the word, oh, no, yeah, Peter. The word alert. To be alert. And when Peter uses that word, alert, he's telling us that we need to be mindful of what's going on around us. And then sober, okay? He's not talking about don't be drunk. Peter's talking about being watchful. To be awake is really what that means. And let me, let me just say this, okay, guys? You, you know, you talk to so many people that, that, that they're, not, they're not awake, Okay? That God wants you to be awake. He wants you to be aware. He wants you to know what's going on around you. And if, and if, and if not, if, if that's not you this morning, if that doesn't interest you, then I don't know. Three simple ways that we prepare. One is this. We prepare ourselves through salvation. You know, that is the, that is the first and foremost the, the way in which we prepare ourselves for anything that comes along in our life is to be saved to come to a place in your life when you realize and nobody else can do this for you when you realize 
that I'm lost without God. I, I know who God is. I believe in God. But I've never made a commitment to Him and given Him my life to ask Him to forgive me, to repent of my sins, and invite Him into my heart and save me. I've never done that. You can do that this morning. If you're listening online and that's you and you want to make that commitment, we'll be more than glad to help you. We'd love to help you walk through that. If you're here this morning at the commitment time, you can come forward and we'll help you. We'll help you understand what it means to be saved, what it means to give your heart to Christ and begin a relationship with him. Second thing is this, is a renewed spirit. You know, God, I, I'm just doing, kind of doing my own thing. I'm just out here doing my own thing. You know, my, my heart maybe is not clean with you. Maybe I'm just a little bit bitter. Maybe I'm a little angry about things. I don't know. God, I need a new, a new heart. Our, our granddaughter, Jay, the other day, you know, all kids cut up, don't they? All, all, no kid's perfect. And she was cutting up at home the other day, and they didn't, not to the place where they needed to discipline her, but um, they just got to let her go. And then all, about an hour after she was cutting up and just not being a good girl, she came to, back to her daddy, and she said, Daddy, you know what? I want to start my day over. And he's like, I'm ready for that. <laughs> you know, God's ready for that. And sometimes a renewed spirit is just like that. It's like, you know what, Lord, I want to start my day over. I need a new heart, a new attitude, a new outlook on life. You can come this morning. We'd love to help you pray through that. And then just simply a refocus. Lord, I've gotten off focus. You know what, Lord, I want to be, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to be honest with you this morning. I'm not as committed as I used to be. I'm just not as committed as I used to be. I'm not giving my, a part of my life back to you. You gave all of your life for me. And I'm, I, you know what, Lord? I just need to refocus. I've let so many things out here, so many things out there, so many things in my life just unfocus me. And I don't want to lose interest. I don't want to get unfocused. I don't want to get lost in all this. And you can come this morning and you can just refocus. Let the Lord help you refocus. Well, I've said enough this morning to let you know that we are living in times that are very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed, if I can say that word. And I'm burdened over them. Not the days in which we live in, but I'm burdened sometimes for people. First of all, for God's people. Lord, would you renew us? Help us to get back, God, to a place where you are first and foremost in our lives and everything else will fall in place. Burden over the lost. That's a passion of mine anyway. Just burden for people that are unchurched unchur and unsaved. People that if they were to die, and it's not about just the ticket of heaven, but if people were to die, that they, their soul, my goodness, their soul would be lost in eternity forever. I don't even want to think about that. And so I have a burden for that, like many of you do. So this morning, I want to ask you to stand. I don't know what you need to do today, where you're at, what commitment you need to make, decision. I, I don't know. God does. The Holy Spirit spoke to you about it. So as we sing this commitment song, if you want to come forward, we'd love to pray with you, help you any way we can. If you're listening online and you need some help, if you'll contact us through Facebook, email, or just give us a phone call, we'd love to help you. Jesus, just take complete control of this next few moments. Lord, hearts, souls, minds, bodies, spirits and people, Lord, is what you're all about. Nothing else matters. And I pray that you would just work in their hearts, help them respond to you in whatever way they need to, give them courage and strength to do so. And we pray in your name and for your sake. Oh
sing that song often, man. That just about says it all. Okay, good. All right. Well, listen, I hope you have a great day wherever you're going, whatever you do today. Uh, I won't be here next Sunday, so I hope you have a great, 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 yeah, great. One more L day, okay? All right. God bless you. Welcome somebody on your way out.